Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is the vislog segment node. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example here. I'm going to run. I'm going to turn on logging and then my character is going to jump and land, jump and land, and then we'll go ahead and jump and land again. And you'll notice down here we have some entries to our visual logger. We'll stop this. We're going to go ahead and look at this and we're going to look at how it looks inside of our entry. So right here, we have this tiny little blue line, and that is an actual segment. And if we scrub through this, let's go back farther so we can see it. When we scrub through this, you're going to notice it's following an arc. We can manually scrub through it so we stop skipping things. And you'll notice it smoothly makes an arc, and it's doing that using line segments. So let's look at the node itself. So inside of our character, what I'm doing is whenever he jumps, I'm making sure we can log our segments only during jumping, and we use the vislog segment node. Takes in a start and an end. So these are two locations in the world, or two vectors basically, that define our start and our end point. You can add some text, which will append itself to that segment, and then a color, which is gonna be the color of our segment, and then a category name. In this case, I have segments, so you can enable or disable them to make it easier for filtering. Now there is something important with the vislog segment node. So let me do a new vislog segment. And you'll see, here's our defaults. This is not actually gonna work. And it's really annoying because I'll show you why. Let me open mine up and we'll open up the default and you'll notice there's one major difference. The default thickness is zero. For whatever reason, the default thickness is zero on a vislog segment. And if you don't open up our advanced options, you're gonna see nothing in our scene. You're not gonna have any thickness to your segment, therefore nothing is visually gonna happen. So in this case, I've changed our thickness to five. So you can see that inside of here, that's a thickness of five for our segment. The additional options are world context object. You can ignore that. And then add to message log. So we'll add any of this text to our message log at the same time, so that way we can see it inside of our output or message log. Now, my example is kind of a little bit weird simply due to the fact that when we're jumping, we don't see really long segments, but I can easily show you that it is, um, how segments work a little bit better. So I'm gonna go into my character. I'm gonna find his tick time. I'm gonna change his tick time to 0.25. So this node's gonna fire off four times a second rather than like 60 times a second. And it's gonna record the last location and the new location with the vislog segment. So if we clear out our old example and stop it, we're going to go ahead and play again, turn on logging, and we're going to jump and end. You'll notice I have some bigger spaces here. But when we look at it visually, we should get a much more, oops, stop this, much more appealing line. So you'll notice we have much bigger lines for our segments. And of course, that's just for a visual thing to show you that the visual, you know, the vislog segment does record Basically, from the start and end point, we just had short start and end points. And that's it. That is the basics of the vislog segment. It could be useful for recording things like an AI starts his patrol point, and then when he gets to his next patrol point, maybe you log that as a segment, and you can visually see where your AI is going. You can also change the color maybe once he's detected the player, and you could visually walk through in a timeline where an AI may have wandered around, seen the player, gone back, and you could also be logging where the player's at, and you could compare these things in your visual logger for any possible problems.